Dale, we were we were t when we were talking about the chickpeas, we talked about chickpeas and flax growing together, and so we have an example of that here. One of the plots that we did is we mi just mixed chickpeas and flax together. We didn't put them in alternating rows. We just mixed them all together, and we came out here and grilled it. And uh, you can see mainly the flax because it's a taller plant. But if you are looking straight down in here, there's a lot of chickpeas down yeah, in there, and they look very very healthy. Uh, they're both doing quite well. Uh, obviously, the flax is blooming. Uh, in fact, it's kind of a little bit post-bloom. There's a lot of these blue petals on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when you look down in there, you see the, those little pretty pink flowers of the chickpeas are blooming down there as well. So these are two that pair very well together, being grown together. Uh, one of the reasons is because these are easy to separate. The chickpea is going to be about the size of a small soybean, and the flax is quite small and, and very slick. And so these two seeds would be pretty easy to harvest together and then separate and, and go their separate ways after harvest. Yeah, uh, you get some diversity that way. Uh, you hedge your risks from, like if you get a, the, the disease that tends to wipe out the chickpeas, um, you, you don't, you're not completely out of a crop if you do lose your chickpeas. Um, the diversity, uh, both good mycorrhizal hosts, um, some people will plant, uh, you know, for example, they're harvesting a brassica for seed, like winter canola. Very important to have a mycorrhizal host to keep those fungi alive. And if you plant monoculture canola, um, you have no mycorrhizal host for a year, yeah. essentially. And so the companion cropping concept has a lot of traction, a lot of utility. I think it's something we're going to be using a lot more going forward. Uh, the big uh, catch in the past, I guess, has been limited herbicide options. But for some of these crops, there just aren't a lot of herbicide options anyhow. They're yeah. not like corn or soybeans where you got 50 to choose from. And so by, by intentionally layering plants, desirable plants, you remove some of the witch, uh, that some of the niches that some of the weeds would otherwise spill. You use up all the sunlight, you use up all the moisture, and that way it's all going to crop instead of some of it going to weeds.